my video and uh, I'll let you guys when the clock strikes five start. So enjoy. Okay. Thank, Thank you. Thomas. Okay. Good evening. A welcome to the City of Petaway Parks, Recreation, Human Services and Public Safety Committee meeting on April the 14th. It is now 5 p.m. Uh, welcome to all of those who have joined us. If you have a comment, please call in. We'll call the meeting to order. And um, uh, do we have any public comments? Hearing none, we'll move on to committee business. Approval of the March 10th, 2020 minutes. Do I hear uh, a motion? Oops. Uh, Council, if you want to raise your hand. Now, those who have joined us are Council Member Greg Barusso, uh, Council Member Lydia Dawson, Asipa Dawson, who are on the committee. And we have uh, been joined by Council President Susan Honda. And I see Lydia is raising her hand. Go ahead, Lydia. Yeah, I have a correction on the minutes, please. Yes, ma'am, go ahead. Um, at the end, next meeting date is wrong. Thank you. Okay, do you want to correct with, that? And that should be what? And with that, April, I can... Uh, April the 14th, next regular correct. meeting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, and, and with, so with that correction? I would like to make a motion to approve the minutes for February 20th um, with, with, with the correction. Okay, is there a second? And second. Greg, I see your hand is up. Yes, Go I ahead. second. Mm -hmm. All right, it's been moved and seconded to uh, approve the minutes of the uh, March 10th, 2020 uh, meeting uh, for the last parks meeting with the, as amended with the correction of the uh, future meeting date. All in favor, please say aye or raise your hand. Aye. Aye, okay. Aye. <laughs> Great, okay, thank you, Greg. All right, uh, so moving forward, we have the amendment number one to the Edward Bryan Memorial Justice Assistant Grant program. Oh, by the way, before we start this, I think uh, our attorney Ryan Carl was going to introduce our new uh, assistant city attorney, Dell. Um, Ryan, is he here? Yes. Uh, Dell has just joined us. Uh, Dell Cold is our newest hire in the uh, department. His, he comes to us from the King County Prosecutor's Office, where he's got quite a, a, long, a long career of experience there. He was a senior uh, civil prosecutor over there. So Dell will be staffing the Parks Committee, and he'll be um, assisting those departments that feed into the Parks Committee. Want to say hi, Dell? Hello, everybody. Looking forward to working with you all. Welcome, Dell. Thank you. <laughs> hi, and welcome. Yes, welcome. Yeah, it's too bad we, we aren't all together there, but hopefully we'll be together soon. Well, thank you very much. Okay, moving on to item B, which is the amendment number one to the Edward Bryan Memorial Justice Assistant Grant program for uh, fiscal year 2017. Uh, Neil, were you going to make a presentation? Uh, is there anyone to make a presentation on amendment number one, item B? Yeah. This is a, a proposal to accept some additional funding to our 2017 JAG grant uh, in the sum of $1,270 on top of the uh, monies that we have already received. The reason for this is that the city of Burien has turned down uh, the money in the grant. Therefore, it's distributed between the rest of the cities and our portion. We are asking to be able to accept the additional $1,270. Wow, sounds like a wonderful idea. Council, do you have any questions? I don't see any hands raised. Do I see a motion? I do have a question. Oh, sure. Go ahead. I'm sorry, I couldn't raise my hand fast enough. <laughs> um, I have two questions, but one is, do you know why Burien declined um, the grant money? I am not absolutely sure, but I think it's because they are declared a sanctuary city, and that is uh, the reason, uh, same as Seattle, and that is the reason why they uh, do not get the money. 
Wow. Okay. And my other question is, um, can you tell me if there's a formula um, as to how it's uh, divided because the numbers just don't make sense? It's not based on population. So do you know what it's yeah, based I'm, on? I'm sure there is, uh, but I don't know myself. That's something I would have to research and ask. Our civilian operations manager would probably be able to uh, provide the exact formula, or we might have to get it from the the uh, actual presenters of the grant from the Bureau of Justice. Okay. Um, Chair, can I ask one other question? Or oh, wait? please go right I'll ahead. I'll wait for my right turn. Ahead. No, go right ahead. It's okay. Okay. So my final question is: um, Any leftover money would be um, would go to Seattle? Is what it says in the agreement well we uh we've been we get these grants every year we put in we put in for them every year and we've never returned any money yet so i suppose that would be the case if we were not to use it all no so my question goes back to if since seattle is another a sanctuary city does that mean they're not going to get the money or do you know I don't really know what their stance is on it. Uh, uh, all okay. I know is this particular $1,200 is coming from uh, the Burians not, not accepting it. But I don't really know okay. exactly how Seattle does it. Thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Neil. Uh, Council President Honda has her hand raised. Uh, thank you. Yeah. So why would Burian decline a grant? Uh, what? What does being a sanctuary city have to do with declining this grant? I'm not sure. It's a political issue, and I'm not okay. really uh, up on up to speed on the politics of it. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Seeing none, uh, do I hear a motion? Uh, Greg. Councilmember Baruso, go ahead, please. Councilmember Baruso, did you want to go ahead and make a motion? How about now? I, I think <laughs> there you go, better. There you go. Thank you. So, thank you, Chair. So, I'm I moved forward to Amendment Number One, uh, J C J G, the Justice Assistance Grant FY 2017 MOUs to the 20 to the April 21st, 2020 Consent Agenda for approval. A second. Very good. And I have it's been moved and seconded that we move this uh, amendment uh, number one for the J grant to the meeting. All in favor? Uh, I think we're, all in favor. we're raising our hands. Aye. Okay. Aye. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Moving forward. Now we have a monthly report on Com our Council uh, performing Mark, arts Mark. and events. And yes, sir. Go ahead. Um, could could you call for any opposed? Just since we're online, and it, oh, at least for me, it's you. very choppy, and it's hard to tell what the vote is right. sometimes. Thank you. Very good. We'll do that. There there were no opposed in the last uh, motion. Okay, now we're just receiving a report on the um, Performing Arts and Events Center from Autumn Grosset. Grosset. I think evening. Autumn is Council calling President. in. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Okay. Good evening, Council President and Council Members. You were sent a report last week for our March 2020 PAC operations. For March of 2020, we only had two total usage days. The building was closed effective March 12th, which um, had several cancellations between that date and the end of the month. The two events that did happen before the closure for Million Dollar Quartet on March 3rd, which had 313 attendees, and then the Greater Federal Way Chamber Luncheon on March 4th. Um, additionally, in our report, we noted that uh, due to the facility closure on March 12th, all part-time staff was furloughed as of that date, and full-time staff is currently working on building projects as well as rescheduling and booking the 2020-2021 season. You can see down below as well, um, Spectra and the Performing Arts Event Center are tracking all impacts based off of the coronavirus, which is currently at about $187,000 in lost projected revenue. And those specific clients and events are notated below. Is there any 
questions regarding March 2020. Um, Council, um, does anyone want to raise their hand? Are there any questions? I, uh, Autumn, I do have a question until somebody else yeah. raises their hand. Um, so we've lost, I think you just, how much was the amount you, you're projecting as a loss for COVID-19? So far with the cancellations and reschedules that have had to happen, they're at about $187,000 in lost revenue. That's the projection, right? That's what I was figuring. Correct. Because we lost 60, about 60,000 in March. It's probably gonna be the uh, same for April and May. Uh, Potentially, it'll probably be greater than that. That is projecting out for all of the events that were canceled between March 15th and June 21st as of now. It's not mm -hmm. just revenue lost in March, April, and May. There are clients, if you look at the bottom of the spreadsheet here, that as far as past July have canceled their events just based off of the unknown and uncertainty throughout COVID-19. Right. Hmm. So, Autumn, how are we, how are we making up for that? I mean, we have a, an agreement with Spectra, correct? What is the question in regards to the agreement? With well, we're, 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 what I would like to do is see the agreement that we have with Spectra. Absolutely, we can pull it. The agreement was entered into in, it started August 1st of 2018, and I can pull that AG number for you and get it sent over to you for review. I'd appreciate that. Council, do we have any questions? Uh, Autumn, is this going to be a report that's going to be presented to the FEDERAC meeting finance committee? Uh, our report to FEDERAC will focus more on financials um, and less on the day-to-day -day operations, but yes, we will be at FEDERAC as well. Okay, thank you. Then we can ask some more questions at that time financially. Okay. All right, thank you. Um, I don't see anyone with the raise, hands raised. Are you sure that no one has any questions? Ah, Council President Honda. Uh, uh, somebody okay. needs to, yeah, there you go. I, I, um, when someone is furloughed, what does that mean? Are they being paid or, I'm not sure what that term means. Absolutely, Brian Hoffman is on the line with us. I'll have Brian Hoffman weigh in as all of the staff members are Spectra staff. Okay. Brian. I think he's muted. Let's see if we can unmute him real quick. Uh, he has to call in. Yeah, I, I'm in. The, uh, there. Yep. Okay. Um, so what that means is that they are not getting paid through Spectra. Uh, we have provided through our corporate uh, HR department that uh, all of the information that they need to to do to basically provide um, and go and kind of register themselves for unemployment um, based on the criteria and everything here in Washington State. Okay, so thank you for that. So how many people do you have then currently working at the PAC? Uh, currently right now there are four people on the payroll. Okay. Do you anticipate keeping all those folks um, if this extends much longer? Uh, the four full-time people, um, no, yes. we continue to have conversations with Autumn and the city, um, kind of what that looks like and what we're, um, depending on how long this goes. And out of the four, um, you know, do we furlough all four full-time employees at the PAC? Um, is it two? Is it three out of the four? Um, but we continue to have those discussions with the city. Okay. Those, Thank you. Those plans as well or something as Brian mentioned something we discussed it it's been a new conversation as this unfolds and as we're given more information from the governor and the president so we'll keep you guys um, on our next report we'll keep you guys in the loop on what those plans are moving forward um, I have another question chair if that's okay go ahead so Brian going forward let's say that the order is lifted to stay home and 
let's say it's lifted in May. Are you hearing from other facilities around the country that people would be willing to come back into a theater situation? Or are you anticipating that this will have long-term effects? Um, what we're hearing in our industry is nobody has a crystal ball. So one of the things that once this and when this gets lifted, is it going to be a staggering um, gatherings with numbers like it was on the other end where, you know, people are gathering. So, you know, if they do lift it, okay, you can have a, a gathering or an event of 50 people or 150 people and then kind of slowly ramp it up. Um, but but we're, we're looking at this thing through probably May or into June where there won't be um, any of these gatherings or events being held. And once it does get lifted, how you know eager are people going to be to go into a setting like the pack um, for a couple of hundred people to watch a performance or those types of things. So it, in different parts of the country where Spectra operates, we're seeing different things. There's certain parts of the country and some of our venues that aren't affected at, at all that are still fully operating and having some of some events um, that that they're holding. Oh. So it's, it's, it's really hard to give a de definite answer um, because we just don't know how the public is going to react um, to being willing to go into and be a part of a, an event or mass gathering, as they're calling it. Okay, well, I guess um, we can just hope for the best. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Council President. Are there any other questions? I have uh, a request of staff um, at our next finance meeting. Now, parks are very impacted by what's going on right now. Parks are very important to our citizens because when they're not able to go into an enclosed space, they're trying to be wanting to be in an open air uh, like our parks, and um, especially when their incomes have been reduced. And so we want to make sure that we keep our parks up to date. And But I, we also are losing revenue from many of our, we're losing revenue, for example, for the soccer, the people who play at Celebration Park. We're losing revenue uh, at Dumas Bay Center. Um, I think I need to see um, how that's impacting our overall revenues and expenditures for parks. And I think that that would be most likely at the next FEDERAC meeting, our next finance committee meeting. So I, I'd just like to see a report at that time. I can get uh, something together uh, for you on that. I apologize for not raising my hand. Uh, we can get something together, but it's all going to be preliminary. Um, right. Currently, right. we know we last for half a month of March, but uh, the next right. FEDERAC meeting won't really capture April at all. So, but we can give some ideas. Right. Yeah, just kind of some projections. We just need to be prepared for what's going on. Um, the other thing I'm worried about, and this probably isn't the place to talk about it right now, we're, we're worried about, you know, the prisoners that are being released. Are they, are they going to be taking up residence in our wooded areas? A um, little bit of a concern about that. So there's some things I think that we need to be monitoring, but thank you. Thank you very much, Autumn and Brian. Thank you for your report. So moving on, uh, the next item on the agenda is the item B, the Cultural Relief Fund application. Autumn, are you going to be presenting this one? Yes, I am. Thank you. Thank you. The policy, the policy question before you tonight is should the City Council approve staff to apply for the full culture, for culture, cultural relief fund for the Performing Arts and Events Center Dumas Bay Center and Federal Way Community Center. A little bit of background on this is that closures, cancellations, and loss of work have begun to happen. Um, King County and for Culture will be distributing $1 million over the coming months. They review this on a week by week basis to determine um, application approval or denial. Through this fund, each building would have a separate application, which would apply for the maximum of $5,000 for each center. There is no match required in order for us to receive funding, and the $5,000 would be credited to the respective site's budget 
to cover expenses during the COVID-19. Is there any questions? Great. Yeah, Council, do we have any questions? Raise your hand if you have a question. I have a question. Oh, there goes Go my ahead, hand. Uh, Council President. <laughs> Thank you. So each facility will apply for the money and is it possible that each facility can be awarded the money or is there a limit that the city can get? There is a possibility that each facility could be awarded the money. They're all three separate um, applications. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I have a question. Um, will we be, are we expecting any money from federal grants for through the federal? CARES, RELIEF, OR WHATEVER? I DON'T HAVE AN ANSWER TO THAT QUESTION. I WOULD REFER TO JOHN HUNTON IF THERE'S ANY ADDITIONAL GRANT. OKAY. JOHN, GO AHEAD. SO WE ARE EXPLORING ALL OPTIONS. Uh, through our finance department uh, and, and uh, we have staff researching what may or may not be available. There's been talk of a fourth stimulus uh, package coming uh, that may take care of cities. And so we'll be all over that as soon as, uh, as, soon as we find out what uh, funding may be available, we will be making those applications for sure. Great, great. You know, and I'm concerned, I really wanna keep uh, as much as we can, uh, you know, our staff employed, wanna keep our staff on whatever we can do to keep our staff um, so that we don't lose anybody. I'm, I'm very concerned about that. Um, I don't know how we're going to work that all out in the end, but I um, want to make sure that our staff are made whole. Absolutely. We're at 100% agreement. Thank you for saying that. Thank you, John. Is there a motion on uh, accepting the Cultural Relief Fund application? Uh, Councilmember Baruso. You just have to unmute your mic. There you go. Yep, got it. So I just had a question just for clarification. So the maximum for the $5,000, uh, mm -hmm. how is that set? Is that a part of the uh, uh, the King County setting that that, that figure? Or is that, how is that figure set? That is correct. The cultural relief fund has a maximum of 5000 that you can ask for each application per site. Okay, thank you. Greg, did you want to make a motion? Let's see. Yes, I got to get back up there. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, I I'm, do it. I'm ready. Oh, I, you can do it. <laughs> okay, I can do it. I got it if you want. You want to go ahead? You found it? Yeah, I found it. Go ahead. Uh, go ahead, Greg. Go ahead, Greg. So I moved forward option one to April 21st, 2020, Senate agenda for approval. Okay, Second. thank you. Council Member Seth Padawson. I second. Okay, thank you. It's been moved and seconded to move the uh, uh, this uh, cultural relief fund application to the April 21st, 2020 uh, 20 meeting. Uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Any, anyone in uh, 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 opposition? Seeing none, it's been moved forward. Next item on the agenda is the lease of the old Target park, park parking lot. To Waste Management of Washington Incorporated. Again, we've got Autumn making the Thank presentation. You. Yes. So the policy question in front of you tonight is should the City Council approve the agreement for use of 82,320 square feet of the old Target parking lot by Waste Management of Washington Incorporated for payment to the city in the amount of $41,160 and authorize the mayor to execute the contract. Background on this is that waste management approach the city of federal way looking to rent a space within city limits that can be utilized for receiving assembly and deployment of the custom garbage recycling and yard waste food carts they are providing to all residential customers under the new long-term garbage contract within federal way this project will utilize a portion of the old target parking lot for about a five month period is there any questions Council, any questions? Council Member Perusso, you have your hand up. Yes, I do. Uh, Autumn, is there any um, provisions to, if they wanted to rent, rent that 
a longer period of time versus a five month and then to a new con a new contract or how's that work based off of the contracts that they have through the public works deployment time frame to get this project done september is their deadline so they don't foresee needing to extend past that five month period at all okay thank you yep. council member Heather dawson yeah um considering that it's going to be in the is it north end of the parking lot um, is there going to be some kind of a cover um, between that and the pack um, for people who are going to come use the pack if we're open within the five months time frame? Would it be covered, um, in other words, or hidden? It won't be necessarily covered or hidden. On page 21 of your packet, which is Exhibit A, it shows a highlighted space um, outlining where waste management will utilize their storage. There will be chain link fence similar to the contractor storage that's currently there, but it won't have a cover or any sort of hiding that it is a um, storage space. Okay. All right. Thank you. Well, we're thankful for the 41160 dollars that's going to be given to the credit to department from waste management. Uh, council, is there, are there any other questions? Seeing none, uh, is there a motion? Uh, council member Seba Dawson? Sure. I move to forward option one to the April 21, 2020 consent agenda for approval. Is there a second? Aye, a second. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Please say aye, aye. Those aye. in opposition? None. All right. It's been moved and forwarded to the uh, uh, the April 21st uh, uh, council meeting agenda. Moving moving on now, our next item on the agenda is the uh, purchase of the park traffic gates. And John Hutton, you're up. Thank you very much, Chair Coachmar, Council President Honda, and members of the uh, committee. Uh, the policy question before you is should the city purchase six traffic gates from Anderson's Fabrication to control parking lots at Celebration and Town Square Park? Uh, background on this is currently there are no gates at Celebration Park and uh, only simple cable gates at Town Square Park to control parking after hours and special events. Uh, staff solicited bids and received six quotes ranging from $34,337 uh, down to $63,000 um, or up to $63,000. 360. Uh, the most responsive and responsible bid was from Anderson's Fabrications for $34,337.60, including tax. Staff is requesting acceptance of the bid from Anderson Fabrication, allocation of CIP funding from the unallocated mitigation, and approval uh, to issue a PO in the amount of $37,771 to include 10% additional contingency. And I'm happy to answer any questions. Council, do we have any questions? None from Council. Council President Honda, any questions? Seeing none, um, I do. Motion. Oh, oh go ahead. actually, I do. Sorry about that. I forgot to raise my hand. Um, John, so for the, with the Gates Celebration Park, would they be down? Would the gates, the parking lots be closed just at dusk or? If there are cars in there, what would happen? Could the, the cars get out? How most would that happen? Sure, I'm sorry for interrupting. Most parks are closed at dusk. Obviously, Celebration is not one of them because we have athletic fields with games being played. Uh, they'd be closed probably in the, in the range of midnight each night by our security company. Um, oh. And cars should not be left in. Um, I imagine if a car was, was left in overnight, it would be posted in the morning. And mm -hmm. if it happened again, they would be towed. So these gates will require someone to physically come and unlock them? Our staff would unlock in the morning and uh, someone would lock them late at night. Okay. Okay, thank you. You're welcome, same at Town Square. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Council President. Any other questions? Seeing none, do I hear a motion? Uh, Council Member Baruso. Yes, thank you, Chair. 
I move the forward option one to the April 21st, 2020 City Council consent agenda for approval. Second. Thank you. Do I hear a second? Thank you very much, Council Member Seven Dawson. It's been moved and seconded. All in favor of moving the uh, purchase of the park traffic gates to the April 21st uh, consent agenda, please signify by saying aye. 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 Uh, any opposition? Any of those opposed? None. All right. It's been moved and seconded to move forward to the April 21st consent agenda. Moving on to item G, 2019 Emergency Management Performance Grant Award. Mr. Gross, is he on the call? Good evening, uh, committee chair. Uh, this is Ray. I'm here. Hi there. Hello. Go ahead. So, uh, the policy question I have for the committee tonight is, should the city of Federal Way accept the 2019 Emergency Management Performance Grant, also known as EMPG, award to fund the mass notification system uh, called Code Red. Some background information on this. Uh, the city first applied for this grant back in 2007 and has applied and been awarded this grant ever since then. Uh, the dollar amount has pretty much been consistent through each uh, fiscal year of $37,500 of that, uh, that pays the full award uh, of, for Code Red. Uh, this grant has zero impact to the city of Federal Way. There's no ongoing cost. It does require a match, but it's kind of an unusual match. Uh, the whole pur purpose of the grant is to encourage local jurisdictions to have an emergency management program. So. As long as you have a budgeted line item, you can use that item to uh, match the grant, which in federal way, we use my salary to match that grant. Uh, the grant itself is a federal grant uh, administered through FEMA, passed through Washington State Emergency Management Division on to local jurisdictions. It has kind of an unusual uh, performance period, so it's June 1st of 2019 through August 31st of 2020. Uh, the reason being is federal, state, and local financial fiscal years may or may not match, as well as some some projects require more than a 12-month period to complete. Uh, with that. Uh, I will take any questions. Okay, thank you, Ray. Council, are there any questions? Council President Honda, do you have any questions? Oh, uh, Council Member Baruso, go ahead, please. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Ray, is there any maintenance costs with this that, that's going to occur later on that that we are responsible for, or do we share that? Uh, council member, there's, there's zero maintenance costs, uh, either for Code Red. Code Red is just a uh, application, so there, there's no maintenance uh, concerning that. And at present, our current application and, and use of the grant doesn't have any application or maintenance to it. If, right. if in the future we change that application, there, there's always a potential of either administrative costs or whatever product we're using to grant the purchase might come with maintenance. But at present, there, there is zero maintenance. Okay. Thank you, Ray. You're welcome. Uh, are there any other questions by council? I have a question, uh, Ray. Um, do we expect any more money from FEMA? Because this is, we, you know, we've been declared a disaster. Uh, at present, uh, FEMA is in the initial process of what they call public assistance. That's what local jurisdictions use to get reimbursed. So, but they have limited the application for FEMA reimbursement to what's category B, which is protective measures only. So they're at present, 
uh, the process has started and we will receive some reimbursement back depending on eligibility of our expenses. But I want to say they, they come out almost with new weekly guidance on the FEMA reimbursement process. So I want to say at, at present, we are looking at a little bit of recovery, but okay. the further this goes on, the process will probably uh, hopefully expand a little bit. Okay. I was thinking about the gates we just purchased. I know we had a grant from, but we, we did put, you know, FEMA said that they would um, give 100% uh, back to uh, the cities um, rather than the cities putting in 25%. I mean, I'm just fishing for money. <laughs> uh, I okay, understand. We'll, we'll and <laughs> yeah, yeah Norm, no, just by way of explanation for those that are listening, usually um, FEMA, oh, let's see, I think it's what the states would put in 25%, the, the um, agency would the city would be 25 percent then fema would be 50 percent isn't that the way it normally works uh the way it normally works is fema will pick up 75 percent oh 75 yeah, normally okay. normally the state will pick up 12 and a half and then the oh, city 12, will pick it. up 12 and a half uh the one the one caveat to this time around uh president trump said that fema is going to pick up 400%. Mm -hmm. That's President Trump saying that. I don't know if FEMA itself is following that policy or not. I haven't seen FEMA come out okay. with that statement yet. I see. Okay. All right. Well, I know that you're on top of it, so we're going to trust that you're going to be doing that. So, Council Member, uh, do we have a motion to move this to the consent agenda for the 21st? Ah, Council Member Seva Dawson. I move to forward the proposed grant to the April 21, 2020 consent agenda for approval. Thank you. Is there a second? A second. Thank you, Council Member Bruso. It's been moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Those opposed? Okay. No opposition. Oh. So we're moving. Yes, go ahead. Is there anybody? Who had the okay seeing none we're moving forward on the agenda to the next item which is um, the COVID-19 update which is again Ray Gross yeah so I'll, I'll very quickly uh, go through the agenda at, or my talking point and then take any questions you might have so uh, the city developed three primary objectives. Uh, that was protection of city staff, uh, continue identified essential services, then uh, focus on the ser social services, uh, of which uh, Sarah Bridgeford has been uh, leading that task, and then just looking at local business, uh, economic impact and recovery of which uh, Tim Johnson has been leading that focus. So those have been our three primary objectives. And we've, I want to say, been meeting those very well. Uh, we've kind of added a couple of more objectives just based on where we're at with the uh, COVID-19. We had our outbreak advisory team, which meets every Monday. Uh, we're starting to do initial planning for reopening and I'll discuss the reopening in, uh, in the next bullet or two. Uh, we're also exploring reimbursement options. Uh, so far, the, the newer ones you might have heard about, like the CARES Act, uh, we don't qualify for reimbursement from the CARES Act just due to population eligibility. Uh, we've looked at the federal leave protection. I can't remember what the actual title of that is, uh, but that's not really providing any reimbursement to the city as well. So at, at present, uh, FEMA is still looking to be the only real source of uh, potential reimbursement. 
Uh, there was discussion that something on the federal level might come out to help cities to recoup some revenue loss. I have to say that will be new ground, and I'm very interested to see if that develops and what that looks like. Uh, so we've done initial, started initial planning for reopening of city facilities. Uh, we've, we're exploring reimbursement. I've been asking the city department to track their costs. The finance department has established cost codes either for purchasing of equipment and supplies or staff time, those sort of things, so we can capture that. And also doing initial uh, after action capturing of information. So once this thing is somewhat normal or, or over, we can look back and explore what we might have done well, some areas that we might need uh, corrective action in or areas that completely failed and what we need to do to prevent that in the future. Uh, some other just background information on COVID for Washington State, the projections are looking very well. Uh, some of the numbers for federal way, and you know, I have to say this, that it's only, these, these numbers are only good for, you know, five seconds after I'm done here. But Federal Way at present has about 207 positive cases with uh, two deaths. And that's starting from the beginning of the whole event. King County is sitting at 303 deaths. So that's up seven from yesterday. And they had 4,620 uh, confirmed cases. And that's up 71 cases from yesterday. Uh, the one part I'd like to spend a little more time on, and then I'll uh, open up for questions, is on the reopening. Uh, initially, the governor put a date out there of May 4th, uh, I want to say two days ago, or maybe yesterday. Uh, my days kind of blur together. Uh, Might have been yesterday. So the state of Washington, state of Oregon, and the state of California kind of formed a reopening pack, very similar to some states in the Northeast. Don't know what that really looks like right now, but I, I did look at the projections of each, each state. Uh, Washington has the best projections as far as declining number of cases and very early in May of having zero projected death related to COVID. Uh, California is very close behind us. Oregon being the, the worst of the three, their projections go into May or into June, actually. And uh, the governor of California kind of laid out a six-point plan of how he envisions opening up California, which I looked at the six-point plan. It, it's not... Uh, it's not anything that would be significant to overcome. Some of it's already being done. Uh, the one concerning statement that the governor of California made is that California does not plan to open or allow any large events until the end of summer. So I don't know how much weight that has behind it, but that's the statement that he has made today. And I don't know if all three states intend to do the exact same action. I don't understand what the, the Western state pact is on reopening, whether they're just going to do everything the same, all three states, or if they're going to take some, some individual uniqueness to each state. So that's, that's kind of where we're at presently. And uh, I'll take any questions or that, Thank you, Ray. Council, do we have any questions? Uh, Council Member Baruso, please go ahead. Well, thank you, dear. I just want to thank Ray for the work that you're doing. 
and I know that this is such a dynamic thing that things were changed. So, but I, I trust you will keep us abreast of things, and we're gonna follow this like everyone else is, whether we do a soft opening or whatever three states. We will be interested to see what each governor does and how we do this with a tri-state type of uh, cooperation that we got going. So, thank you, Ray. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Council Member Barista. Uh, uh, Council President Honda. Thank you. Um, I'd also like to thank Ray for all the work he's put into this. I have a question on multifamily um, complexes. Have there been more cases, not just in a federal way, but overall in uh, multifamily areas where you have a common hallway or um, parking lots where people could be closer than six feet at times? Well, uh, I can give you two, two answers. One is a local one, and then one is based on what they've learned in New York City. The local one, the way uh, public health, either <laughs> in county or the other two counties, the other two major counties that are impacted, they do not track or they have not released information detail down to that granular level. Uh, so that's, that's one part of my answer. The other part is what they've learned from New York City is obviously the high density of the population, particularly living in uh, high rise apartments where you know, there's 50 to 80 floors and they have the elevators. People have to use the elevators. You know, they're not going to climb up 50 flights of stairs. And you have the confinement of the elevator as well as when the elevator goes up and down, it uh, aerosolizes the moisture droplets. And that's what, that's one of the primary uh, means of infection that they're experiencing in New York City. So to get back to your original question, yes, high close density uh, living arrangements, there's a higher risk of, uh, of getting COVID uh, infection. So the common areas of a multifamily residence, yes, uh, the risk is higher there only because you have the potential of more people uh, touching the exact same common area or common item. And then that person, another person not practicing, uh, you know, washing their hands or keeping their hands away from their face, that sort of thing. So in the future, what will we do differently for folks in federal way who live in multifamily complexes to keep them safe. Do you oh, think anything will come out of this? Uh, I'm, I'm hoping there a lot comes out of this. Uh, you know, a lot of my job is what I call the chicken little. When early on, uh, when I start seeing something on the horizon and start trying to raise awareness, there's a lot of pushback just because, you know, nine out of 10 times, nothing ever comes from whatever might be out on the horizon. Uh, in the future, probably the biggest thing we can do is inform our community as early as possible, you know, regardless of the chicken little effect, have that information out there. So if things actually develop and get more serious, they already have some public education and awareness that they can look back on and start implementing. In the Marine Corps, we always have this statement of keeping the initiative. As long as we can keep the initiative, things are gonna go our way. As soon as we lose that initiative, which in this case would be public education and public awareness, uh, then we're just playing catch up and, and that, never truly ends well. That's true. Thank you very much. I appreciate all you've done. 
Thank you, Councilmember President. <laughs> Councilmember Seth Dawson. Uh, Councilmember Seth Dawson, your hand is up. Go ahead, please. Do you, you have to unmute your mic? I am so oh. sorry. I keep. I was talking without muting it. Sorry. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay. My question is: um, You mentioned that we didn't qualify for the grant because of our population size, our city size, right? That, that's correct. So, what is the pop, what what is the number? The magic number? Well, the only city that qualified was the city of Seattle. The rest of them were counties. Okay. Uh, I don't. S S okay. So you also mentioned that um, Sofima got the grant. Is that, I think you said something like no city qualified there for FEMA. FEMA is managing it. Is that what I heard you say? Yeah. The, the CARES Act, the city uh -huh. did not qualify for. Uh, for FEMA, the process called public assistance, that's mm -hmm. where state, county, and cities uh, get reimbursed for disaster response. Uh, that has started. Uh, the process is probably going to be a six to nine month process uh, unless they just rewrite some of, the, some of the guidance. But as long as we have eligible costs, uh, we'll we'll receive some level of reimbursement based on the protective actions that we've taken. So one of the other council members mentioned the gate. It, it's possible those gates could be considered a protective action and some of that cost get uh, reimbursed. You know, the process I normally approach with it is any any expenditure that has a possibility using the gates again, uh, we'll put that in our, our application and let them tell us no. All right, thank you so much. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, uh, Council, are there any other questions? So Ray, I have a, a couple questions. Um, of our 207 confirmed cases in the federal area and the two deaths, did you do any um, research regarding, as they did in the federal government, regarding ethnicity or minority population or racial disparity or age? Uh, that's a very good question. I want to say King County has just opened a couple of tabs that address those areas. So uh, I will, I will look at that and see see how well it's, it's developed, and I can provide those numbers uh, to to the council and the mayor. That'd be great. That that would help us for our planning for the future. You know, because Absolutely. in case there's a rebound effect in the fall or something of that nature. Also, Ray, do you know if we're going to have any type of testing or tracking? You know, well, testing the, to see if you had the virus or yes uh, are, are you talking for city staff or just citywide or uh, countywide citywide uh, citywide yes there, there's currently testing happening now and that that's only going to get uh, more more aggressive as more and more types of tests become Self, self application as well as faster results. So that's that's in the pipeline. I'd say within less than two weeks, King County will start getting those out to the various health care providers and and private practices and that sort. So that's going to happen. The the tracking piece of it, you know, public health is uh, kind of restrained by HIPAA laws and that sort of thing. So I don't know how much detail on the tracking piece that 
we will actually get. Okay. Okay. I'm just more concerned with the testing. I think that would be very helpful for our one thing for our employees to go back to work, not just our employees at the city, but employees of all the businesses of Federway in case there's any concern. Okay. Uh, and in fact, I think uh, we, I would suspect that many of our citizens have, might have had it and had a mild case and might have built up immunity, which might be also a very good thing to know. All right. So we've come to the end of our agenda. Uh, Council President, sure. go ahead. Oh, could I? I was um, listening to the King County Council meeting today, and Director Patty Hayes from King County Public Health is giving a report. And I think we're all getting Deanna Dawson's updates every day, which is very thankful. And I think that maybe the next time we get together, we can all send her a card thanking her for the work she's done because she's given us a lot of information. But um, the King County Public Health is only going to be updating their numbers on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday publicly. And um, Director Hayes was asked about that and she said that they're actually doing it every day and you can go to their page and read the numbers. They're just gonna have the press conference or the press release on Monday, Wednesday, and Fridays. So if you wanna see the, those numbers, they will be there every day. Oh, great. Thank you. Thank you very much. Council, any other uh, comments? Okay. Seeing none. Our next meeting will be uh, at 5 p.m. That is their meeting, who knows? And it, right, if there's no other objections, uh, we're going to adjourn the meeting here at 5 p.m. 56 p.m. Thank you, Chair. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Good job. Thank Welcome. you. Thank Welcome, Mr. Bye -bye. Colby. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Good night. Thank you. Bye, John. Okay. Good night. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye now. I leave.